What's up, everyone? Welcome. We are live right now in the Cannabis community. And if you're watching us on YouTube, thank you so much for joining us. Please like and subscribe. We've got a great show for you today. We have Brad from Raw Genetics right here. We're going to be talking all about seeds, clones, t-shirts, stickers, all sorts of things. What's going on in the universe of Raw Genetics? We're going to get into it. But first, Happy Halloween, everyone. This is our Halloween episode. It's also uh, kind of our harvest episode. A lot of our outdoor friends have been harvesting and maybe throwing some stuff in grove bags and curing and maybe you've even rolled up some of it. I hope you're enjoying it. But uh, we've got a couple shout outs before we get into the show. Uh, first off, shout out to our friends at Lost Coast Plant Therapy. We're going to be giving away this hat from our friends over at Lost Coast Plant Therapy. We're going to be giving away this hat at the end of the show. Um, but make sure to check them out, Lost Coast plantherapy.com. This is an amazing spray that you can use um, as a part of your IPM regimen all throughout the growth cycle, both in veg and in bloom. It's uh, totally fine to use um, on your flowers, but uh, make sure to check them out and support them. We really appreciate their support. Also, shout out to everyone in the Cannabis community. We've got our live chatters at cannabis.app in your browser or search up the uh, Cannabis app in the app store. Join us and use the code growers love for 50 percent off your first month but you can join our live chat and ask questions and all that kind of stuff and then like i said take part in those giveaways and then last but not least we've got some shout outs because we've got some special seed things going on today what's going on jr well we got some offerings from tiki madman um he was <clears throat> kind enough to this is like you said our renewing of the year and uh, Tiki came on and supported us for another year. And uh, what he did also is he created a breeding project and he gave me a list and he let me pick off that list of stuff that I thought I would want to have, you know, represent our community. And so uh, I chose uh, the Devil Driver by Pablo's Revenge. And that one's uh, Pablo's Private Reserve is the name of that one. And that drop's going to happen on Halloween. And uh, you can find those at NeptuneSeedBank.com, <clears throat> and you can also find those at TikiSeeds.com. Uh, half of all those proceeds go to our cannabis community, helps keep the lights on, and when we ship out <clears throat> all those uh, seed packs and all that awesome shit that our kind folks like Brad hook us up with, uh, you know, that keeps that train a rolling, and we super, super appreciate it. Uh, so, yeah, those that's going to drop on Halloween, folks. Uh, please support us and grab a pack. Uh, it's going to be some great genetic preservation right there. Uh, there's genes locked in those two uh, that are very desirable. They've been very uh, popular for him, and I think there's some really, really good stuff in locked in there. And then also we have uh, Neptune Seed Bank uh, as an offering of Brad's, uh, our guest today, and that's a peanut butter pave. That's a fem pack. Uh, it's a five pack. And uh, I'm just now finishing my harvest of uh, my peanut butter pie uh, that I got from Risky Resin or Rosin Ryan. And I'm telling you, man, it's hands down my favorite smoke right now. So this peanut butter pave is going to be insane. So don't miss out on that. Uh, that's at NeptuneSeedBank.com as well. Awesome. Thanks to all of our supporters. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Brad, for hanging out with us while we got through our shout outs. But uh, let's we you know, we've had Brad on the show. He needs we don't need to get too deep into the introductions too <laughs> into the preamble. We have a lot of great episodes with Brad. So make sure to uh, search those up as well. But today we're going to be talking all about, like I said, seeds, clones, stickers, clothes, the whole universe of Brad. But uh, what's up? What are you um, What are you smoking on right now, actually? I'm smoking on some of the Zicky guy right here. Uh, one of the different phenos I have. I've got a couple different ones, and uh, there was a lot of winners in the lot. So it's just been really tough to narrow it down to, like, one. <laughs> so we've got a couple that are kind of making the rounds, and uh, this is one of them right here, which that's the Skittles BX2. And, man, these things just taste so good. Like, I get super ripped off smoking this candy stuff. So Oh, man, yeah, I love that stuff. Well, uh, JR, what was our first question? I think you had a good one to well, start us know, off with. 
Yeah, we always start our our uh, interviews off by tell, asking people how they fell in love with the player, and we've done that with you a few times. So I thought it would be really cool to talk about uh, your first time ever taking a dab and how you fell in love with dabs and what that Man. experience was like. Dabs, dabs were crazy. I'm trying to remember exactly the very first time. I kind of remember like when it began, you know. Yeah. I, I, I had uh, <laughs> I had never even heard of anything like that, you know, before I came to California. I was in Florida and uh, yeah, we had hash and stuff like that. But, um, you know, dabs, VHO, all that. I hadn't even seen it. And I had been in Cali for a little bit. And uh, I remember I was hanging with the trim crew and people were dabbing. And uh, yeah, that's I just remember getting my first time taking a rip. And I was like, holy shit, that's like smoking dynamite you know what i mean like it just <laughs> totally. got lifted and uh and then i could remember from that like it was obviously a, a good fit for me because i've always been a heavy smoker and uh from there you know we we're going out to all the shows in southern california and uh in the earliest days like i'd be lining up and taking dabs with everybody you know what i mean um so yeah dabs were just like i can remember the early days too versus like right now where like, I'm pretty picky. I don't really smoke BHO. It's pretty much like all really nice rosin and stuff like that. But back in the day, man, it was like, it was way more renegade. It was, yeah. you know, titanium nails and domes. And Hot uh, I remember hell. having, do you remember the highly educated top hat, bro? That yep. was our shit, bro. We had, <laughs> we had the top hats because it was the carb cap built in, bro. And yep. we're like, it's a top hat, so it's classy. <laughs> and bro, we would just be, we would just be ripping those things at the events, man. And it was just like, just uh, but the quality, too, right? The quality has come so far forward too. Uh, from like, I remember learning to take dabs. Uh, what I taught, what I was taught in the beginning was like heat it up on one side until it was red. And then when it was no longer red, take the dab on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's classic, man. I didn't that even was know the that tech. That was the classic tech, like dabbing on the other <laughs> side was going to make that much of a difference. <laughs> a little right? titanium nail thing. But I remember that was the fucking thing. And then um, obviously it it elevated from there. And I was fortunate enough to have like a lot of people around uh, keeping my education growing on dabbing and, and how to like get your etiquette up and shit. And uh, yeah, it's really an interesting part of the culture. Dabbing is it's a lot of fun, but it's not for the faint of heart for sure. <laughs> Well, I mentioned it to uh, uh, Neptune when he was on, and I'm kind of like, like your, you know, uh, your perspective about it as well. Do you feel like uh, the rosin and hash community and home grower communities are kind of carrying the industry in the community right now? Mm, that's a good question. It's definitely become like a very predominant part of everything, in my opinion. Like we're very aware of hash, and I'm always looking for new things that wash uh breeding for hash specifically is kind of tough so you know i don't like to be like oh we're breeding for hash uh but you know we're finding hash makers we're combining them and in the hopes of increasing the percentage of hash makers going forward uh but there's never really a guarantee that that will be the outcome but you hope that it will be of course sometimes it's better than others but yeah, I think it's become very important. It's something we pay a lot of attention to, and and I'm constantly trying to help progress and and find things that are you know exemplary in that area. Yeah, it's kind of wild because I talked to my 17 year old nephew, and whose name we won't mention, but I asked him, <laughs> you know, like how do the homies consume right now? And he's like, yeah, flowers for old people. He said, really? dabs and dab rigs are for moms and dads. And he said, all of us, <laughs> use, we use pens and edibles. And he said, it's a lot easier to fly under the radar uh, with your parents or other people <laughs> if you're just eating edibles and sneaking a pen versus yeah. like blasting out a hot <laughs> or <dab> rig <laughs> in the torch. <laughs> totally. Yeah. yeah. I can see that. There's a um, there's a shop that I go to, and it's like kind of along the route of like an Amazon warehouse. And I see a lot of those like drivers going in and buying vape carts and stuff like that. Yeah. And I totally get it. You can know the kind of the quick and discreet uh, method. Yeah. It totally makes sense. 
it's way more acceptable if you see somebody vaping in public and you, yeah. nobody really bats an eye at it. it's fairly common now so it's like whether they're smoking weed or not um you know i don't think people notice so yeah i could see that for me with pens like it's kind of a love-hate relationship yeah. for me it's it's hard to find pens that are consistently good enough uh, to where I feel like they don't get me congested. I feel like when I'm smoking vape pens, like if I have one all the time for like a month yeah. or two, I start to get congested from it way more than yeah. just taking dabs or smoking, which I yeah. find to be concerning, right? <clears throat> and so even recently, it's like, I don't know, I was smoking vape pens regularly for a minute, and then I just noticed I was coughing, and I was like, all right, let me quit buying the vape pen. And now cough is pretty much subsided. And, and so for me... I don't know. I, I just think that smoking flour is better, but it is way more low key with a pin. But I also feel like uh, you become tolerant to pins so quickly. Yes. And it's hard to get a pin that can deliver a high enough yeah. dose that's effective and continues to be effective. And so it's like, that's why it's you're doing like this a, all the goddamn time, you know? Exactly. What I mean? It's like, it's it's like a dangerous. fidget spinner for your lungs, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm anxious. I'm bored. I'm walking. Like, let me take a rip. And then, but like, you never really, you never really get high. It's kind of like a pacifier or something. So, yeah, it's I don't know. It's traveling. Like, yeah. Well, you know what? Traveling is probably the best time because it at least keep you um, satisfied, you know, when you go places. Um, Typically, your options change, and outside of uh, California, unless we're going to like another state that's wreck or something, I find that the options are usually pretty uh, tough to stomach. Yeah. You know, so I'll, yeah, you try to like at least have something to get by. Totally, yeah. It's funny you said that about uh, coughing from vape pens because I've been I've been having to work in an office, you know, three days a week. And uh, I can't smell like weed <clears throat> at this sort of company. So I've been doing the vape <laughs> right. pen. I've been doing the vape pen and I've noticed exactly what you're talking about lately. I've been coughing lately and I'm like, what the, what the F? <clears throat> and um, it's interesting to hear that you've noted that as well. Um, I've known it for years, you know, and it's like, I, I guess that's a good signal to probably just give up on them for me personally. But yeah. I always kind of go in and out of like a moment where it's like, ah, oh, the convenience is is nice to have. And they win by convenience only. Yes. <laughs> I feel like, um, you know, and like you said, it's so incognito that it's able to have like a product fit with like so many more consumers. And so they're not going anywhere. Hopefully they'll get the technology down to where like, I want to buy one that's just full of rosin and I don't want it to be cut. I got one from a buddy of mine, uh, Canadocio recently, and his was like a, a rosin one. Uh, it was a really nice product, smoked really well, still kind of made me cough a little bit, but didn't give me the congestion. It was more from it just yeah. like rip and dank. And uh, he was like very clear about how to smoke on it so that it would stay nice yeah, and exactly. not fuck up the viscosity. And I could see what he said because there in the end, I got impatient with it and I started like fucking powering on it. And it definitely started drinking the rosin up into the mouthpiece. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. I hate that one. Yeah. But that was <laughs> because I was like really. I put it on high. I was going in because it was pretty much done for. Yeah. But uh, that one was one of the better ones. It didn't feel like it had like a bunch of cut or a bunch of um, agents in there to help maintain the consistency. Viscosity, it's, yeah. Yeah, the viscosity. There you go. That was the word I was looking for. Right. And uh, it, it smoked really good. So the one from Canadocio, I liked, uh, you know, but it was pricey, right? Like it's not, you're not getting that for the low. It's not oh, like for going sure. to get like a, a, like a raw gardens cart you could probably get for like 35, 40 bucks. Yeah. Uh, you know, in the dispensary here in Cali, you're going to pay like $80, 200 for like, exactly. yeah. like that, you know. That's what I've done. Uh, our friend over at Huckleberry Hill Farms, he's got white thorn rose, like f full extract rosin carts like that. And they put, they store them. Yeah. They tell you to store them in your fridge and uh, they're great. Tastes amazing. But like <laughs> you said, they're, they're not cheap. Um, but I, let's get into, yeah. oh, sorry. I was going to, I was going to get into our yeah. questions before we bullshit for too long. Um, but, uh, <laughs> J, JR, did you want to kick us off with the first one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we're going to, I want to rifle through these. We're going to shotgun approach this so we can hit all the bases because we got a lot to talk about my friend. Uh, so <laughs> no what's new, what's new in the raw menu for the seed line and where do you see that, uh, kind of focus going into the new year? 
Uh, so definitely going to be trying to split the difference here and have a fair amount of work on gas projects and candy projects, right? Because there's no stopping in sight on the Z projects. Um, the BX3s are being heavily hunted right now, and I'll be getting a mail from that. People haven't even got the BX3s yet. They're getting some of the ZBX2 crosses, right? Um, so I know that we're going to be doing a lot more focus on continuing those projects with the ZBX work, going to three, going to four. And then uh, in the short term, we've got a couple more Pave things to drop. We've got a collaboration with a uh, mega robot brand, which I'm really excited about. Um, they're in the rec market out here. And so we're going to collaborate on mega OG. It's Skywalker mm. OG, which is one of our longest, uh, mm. most prized OG cuts that we've held forever uh, across with Pave. And so I think it's going to be a very good spin on uh, you know, traditional OG Kush, keeping all the things you want. Uh, but being a little bit more tight and compact like Pave is, it's a little bit better uh, to handle. So I'm really excited about that. That should be hopefully, um, other than me mentioning it, we should have marketing stuff coming out for that soon, hopefully. Count um, me in. He said, count me in. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, we want to definitely keep uh, working OG stuff, working mm. gas stuff. And in that name, like I have a pecan pie line, which is um, – that is burnt toast Georgia pie crossed mm. with we, we mainly focused on gas. We've got a bunch of OG stuff in there. And then our most recent feminized project that just came down, uh, but we haven't really started releasing yet is the soap work. We've got um, not soap, but soap uh, feminized line. And so we've got the soap S ones that are out They're available right now. They're flying off the shelf. So they probably won't last too long. Um, which is in the wake of like us doing the soap pollen drop, which people really seem to love getting the pollen drops. So um, if people yeah. keep up with us, you know, you can expect to see more feminized pollen drops. Soap was the last one. We had a good amount, not quite as much as we had on the Georgia pie before that. The next one is going to be uh, Skittles pie, which I'm like really, really excited about. It's definitely one of our most popular um, crosses to date is Skittles Pie. It's definitely like top three. And so I think the uh, the Z Pie line, Z, you know, Z Pie F2 and a bunch of cool stuff that we put in there. Those are all going to be really, really exciting. And uh, in the beginning, people will have an opportunity to get a limited drop of the Skittles Pie pollen, which will be pretty special. They're very special. Nice. Well, um, we've we just had um, Neptune from Neptune Seed Bank on like a couple weeks ago. A yeah, great episode. Check it out if you're watching. Um, but um, he, we were talking to him about like kind of trends in the market, right? And we were talking about stuff that he's noticed where people. He said the the trend is that people are buying thems, and then he also made a comment about people buying three packs and six packs versus you know tens <laughs> or twelves or whatever. And it's funny because in the comments we get comments from people of like, hell no, I don't buy thems. I only buy regulars and you know big packs and all this kind of stuff so you know we a shout out to our hardcore you know uh grower uh crew that's watching but um anyways the question for you brad was what are you noticing um uh, with respect to those sorts of trends yeah uh i think it's a clear winner that feminized seeds are the predominant choice of most people and varying aspects of it but on the seed side uh fems are multiple times over regs for sure um you know i'm still really passionate about doing reg work doing the traditional stuff we have a Thank lot you. of new traditional lines right now and i will say some of the traditional lines just people are just automatically not interested or if they are uh people have been like oh can you make that feminized <laughs> you know uh, what i mean like it's just uh, super easy to crack that out guys but, um, you know, and so it just kind of says a lot to me that um, people are more interested in the fem seeds. And I feel like the people who are against them, I used to be one of those people in the early days of breeding where I was under the notion that the feminized work was of lower quality and had a, a more frequent um, intersex rate. But I found that to not be the case. The case remains to be like stability solely based on your selections. And if you're using unstable shit, 
then you can mm-hmm. expect increased ratios or if there's instability you're aware of versus something that is almost never like that, you're going to have way lower ratios. And that just seems to be where selection is the key to stability in general, because you're never going to fully remove um, intersex traits popping up. You can narrow them and you can get it to where most people don't have that experience. But I don't think that fully removing it, um, anything short of like maybe like gene manipulation, which we don't obviously, we're just doing breeding. Um, you know, I don't think that you're, you'll ever remove it fully. Right. Yeah, and I think uh, that's good. Go no, go oh, ahead. I was, well, I was going to say real quick, a uh, quick story about uh, fems that I that just happened recently is I had a pack of fems that I think was uh, from JR's pack of seeds that he, he sent me over a goodie bag of seeds and I had some fems and I hooked up um, a neighbor from across the street and I said, because <laughs> he wanted to grow some stuff in his backyard and I just hooked him up with like a little three pack of fems or something like that. And I said, those seeds, you can just grow them straight outside you don't have to worry about female male or whatever you just grow them you don't have to worry about it and he just told me like a week ago he's like hey man i harvested it turned out great and i just like i love i love that you know i love that these are seeds that people can just grow and i don't have to give you a shit ton of instructions on like well at this point do this and this and you know the whole thing uh you can just put them in the ground and grow them I think that's so, why they they're a clear winner for people, right? It's simplicity and consistency. So at the end of the day, what does a male offer that you can't get out of feminized breeding? Anything? Um, I don't know. Just I think longevity of like the genetics in general. Uh, as far as like results in breeding, <laughs> there's not a direct benefit that I can think of where it's like, oh, you got a male, you're like. Like, I I just can't see that in my experience, like it's always the male is as good as my selection and the fem seeds are as good as the plant that I reverse. Right. And so at the end of the day, it's just like you can get the same results either way. It's a little bit of preference, but I do think that it's important to preserve um, traditional breeding in the sense of like still doing back cross work, doing some you know, forward line work and at least keeping a lot of interesting like F1s coming because no matter what in the F1 poly hybrids, we find so many really cool things and like cannabis is so much cooler today than and more diverse than it was before. Right. It's just yeah. it's a whole nother ball game, right? It's like a lot of expressions. You know, yeah, For sure. Which is good. It can be good. It can be bad. It really depends on like what you're hunting, what you're looking for. There's a lot of cardboard terps out there these days too. Boo speak on it <laughs> it <happens. And> that's, <laughs> nobody's immune that's, nobody's immune to it so you know it could happen yeah, to right. anybody it's not a, it's not a shot at anybody or anything yeah. it's just a reality <laughs> of like the state of the market is like you know sometimes you're like oh this is just not that interesting and that yeah you know, i see it too sometimes so well kind of on so that note speaking on that it was, go ahead where do you see kind of the seed game heading as we move yeah. forward more states are coming online the east the south home breeders are breeding more so do you see those empires of seed companies and genetics being a thing of the future or do you think it's just gonna kind of be dispersed amongst open source type uh projects that's a good question i think that it'll be hard to make a real strong prediction on it because as all of the markets are developing and everything's going more toward recreational and licenses and everything, <clears throat> it's really hard for a lot of breeders and a lot of uh, smaller operators to be able to transition just based on financial constraints and and some of the hoops you have to jump through. So I feel like that alone is going to eliminate a ton of people. Um, and, you know, if anybody's out there thinking about that, you know, you should just look at trying to make partnerships um, and, and work with good people to keep your brand moving forward and scaling and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, I think that it, it for the people who are able to bridge the gap, they have a strong shot at having like a breeding dynasty, as you would yeah. say, you know, I yeah. think is a good there's already a bunch of the, you know, the original 
breeders, the oldest guys, they're already locked in, right? So those yeah. guys aren't going anywhere. Now it's up to a lot of us newer guys that were in like my era to to also bridge that gap and and get into the rec market and participate in nurseries and that's really something that I'm very interested in is participating in, um, you know, getting genetics to nurseries and and try to get those into people's gardens, um, you know, at scale. I think that's obviously where um, if you're a company that's focused on genetics, I think that's just clearly the next step. And so we all have to be looking at how do we start to cater to that <clears throat> and make that a bigger part of the the business model. That's an interesting th uh, point because I something that I noticed um, like a few years ago is that so humble I think it's humble seed company they had their strain uh, blueberry muffin and they had that uh, distributed through Dark Heart Nursery which was a pretty big um, clone nursery here in Northern California but they had distribution all throughout California so anyways for a couple years there. I noticed that you saw blueberry muffin in the in stores, like at dispensaries. It mm -hmm. was a, it went from a seed that I saw <laughs> or a clone that I saw at Emerald Cup to in store super super quickly and like at scale. And it was because of that dark heart nursery kind of distribution. So that's a really um, really smart, I think, to try to get into that kind of network, if you will. They've been very successful with that model, um, which I'd love. I'd love to learn more about how they put it all together because it seems like they're they've been very successful at partnering with like a ton of different farms in a lot of different places, and being able to scale through partnership. Um, so yeah, no, what they do is really impressive. You know, they're not going anywhere for sure. <laughs> they're 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 one of the like there are more places than most people. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, they're <laughs> sure. smart. Yeah. Yeah, well, I sure. think one of the one of the things we kind of hammer on with breeders is that whole idea of of doing a breeding project, releasing a small amount of seeds, pheno hunting the rest, finding the keepers, put them on the cut market, take those keepers, make the final product, put that on the shelf, and then have that as your brand representation with your gear, your you know your all your apparel and everything that goes with it. So with that kind of blueprint in mind. Uh, where you at, Brad? Where do you think you're at? <laughs> uh, you know, it's been challenging for sure. It's a competitive market, uh, but we're starting to make some good steps in that direction of, I mean, there's plenty of places where you can find people that grow our genetics um, and you can find them on the shelves. That's become more commonplace. But having like actual branded stuff on the market has definitely been on the roster. And so... Uh, hopefully we'll have some cool announcements coming up soon about that. You know, I don't want to like project anything uh, before it's too, too early or whatever, but, but yeah, I think that um, in due time, people will be able to, you know, properly get like our flowers on the market for sure. And I hope you get the kind of financial resources and support that every other businessman in America has right now. You know what I mean? I want you to have those resources and accesses. So hopefully if you can just stand tight until this whole kind of season of the witch goes and you have our op yeah. the, the feds fall, you know, when the feds fall, we have our opportunities to be legitimate businessmen. Um, I, 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 you know, I'm, I put it out there, bro. You're in the right spot. And I hope you're one of those dynasties at the end of the day. We'll do our best. You know, we've got uh good, good friends and good places. And so I think, um, you know, with the right opportunity, we'll probably be able to execute and, and make that leap. So our last, know, um, last question on the seed topic or while we're on seeds was um, about hoplite and viroid. So is that, is that a thing um, that you feel has made an impact on the market, whether that's, I guess maybe, maybe it could be fear and maybe it limits people from buying seeds or something like that. Cause maybe they think they might get it or, and then also I'm curious what you think. Is it, is it actually a legit like scourge that's hurting, you know, uh, breeders and all that sort of stuff in terms of actually in the grows and it's showing up out there. I'm just curious what your thoughts are. Pulse check. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a real thing to be concerned about for sure. But I do think that um, some people are 
so in fear, like you said, to where they will project uh, things that are just deficiencies or or just yeah. things that are, are more normal, right? And they'll be like, this is hops, hops latent virus, you know? And I'm like, well, we tested it, so it's not, but, you know, <laughs> but... Um, it, I, so there's like a good and a bad, right? Like the fear aspect of it is bad, but the good side is more people are testing and it's not like this is really a new thing. Uh, it's been around. It's been around. It's been here forever. I'm sure of that. We just now know exactly what it is. And so yeah. that we've given the monster a name and identity, yeah. you know what I mean? So it's like projects more fear because now it's not a mystery like, oh, we don't really know what it is. It's like, nah, we know. <laughs> so like I've Voldemort seen, has taken his form, there right? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen a lot of really interesting reactions where people like, like you said, are just kind of uh really freaking out about it. I don't know. I've been around for a long time. In the early days, uh, we just stayed away from plants that don't look healthy. Like it's just a good rule of thumb that if you receive plants and all of a sudden they just seem very dull, very lackluster um even if nothing's wrong you could maybe just request a different one right because that's the first thing is like plants that are weak for no reason is usually the first sign of something that could be a problem you know so it's like it's a good idea to um get your stuff tested you know we try to stay up on getting things tested as well and so far we've had uh i would say probably a lot of luck with that nothing's popped hot you know, I know a lot of other people have, and I've seen a bunch of people in the community also like testing on their own, testing our stuff and everything's been coming back clean for them too. So that's really good to see because, you know, even with testing, um, the interesting part of that virus that I know is true is like, it can be in one part of the plant and not in another, right? So it can kind of like move around in weird ways. Um, and that's why I say it's like, it's a good idea that if something looks weak and unhealthy, um, like if you bought clones from somebody, just maybe hit them up and say, hey, could I get a replacement workout shipping or whatever it is and just try to get a more vibrant looking cut. And that'll just as a good rule, that'll help you steer away from, you know, potential issues in the garden without deploying money on testing and sending out cuts to to labs. It's It's not really that expensive to do um, if people want to check it out. I mean, anybody can do it, you know. Yeah, I want to. Well, that's kind of segmenting us into the clone talk, and um, uh, that was kind of one of the last questions I was going to ask you that we kind of got into is, uh, you know, with testing available, like I use Farmer Freeman. He wants top, middle, bottom, and he also wants a root sample. Um, what are the kind of the quarantine recommendations you make to your customers who are buying clones off SecretSelections.io? Uh, you know, I guess we haven't really made specific um, directions for them, but I do think it's a good rule in general for gardening that when you receive stuff, just to try to keep it separated from whatever your other garden situation might be, you know, <clears throat> we strive to make sure that we're pest free, bug free, disease free, all those things. Um, but, you know, even with people striving to do that things could happen right um so far we've had a great track record and we haven't had any uh any issues but um you know when you're ordering from people in general you don't always know exactly where they're what the conditions are that they're coming from right so i think just based on that it's it's just a good rule to try to separate it the best you can i think everybody's version of that will vary based on scale and available space of course so it's hard to really make <clears throat> recommendations some people can't at all i remember in the earliest days you know space was a rare commodity you just have like yeah. your your one hobby setup and you're trying to figure out how do you like make this magic <laughs> yeah you know what i mean so it's like uh, at that point hopefully you know that you're ordering from you know a trusted source uh, that would would be you know checking those boxes to the best of their ability. So talk to us about what's on the menu. What kind of clones uh, can people check out? <clears throat> yeah, we've got a lot of cool stuff uh, at Secret Selections. I try to keep the flavors pretty diverse. Uh, we've got like gelinade for some lemon stuff if you like that. 
uh, Gelato 41 for those classic Gelato guys, uh, a bunch of stuff from us, Georgia Apple Pie, Blue Slushy, um, the Squeeze, actually, uh, which is mm. from the Slushy line that was super limited. <laughs> I actually named that um, in honor of like one of my friends that passed away. And he always wanted us to uh, call flower squeeze. And I was like, God, ah, nobody's going to do that. You know, turns right. out he was ahead of, he was a pioneer. He was ahead of his time. And uh, it, it's a pretty sick name. And so that's actually a Skittles BX one feminized that we did. Uh, those seeds are long sold out, but we do have a cool Fino. Um, she's a little slow, but the flavor is pretty insane. You get like the slushies, but like way more Z. So you know, it's something really special for sure. Um, we've got that available. Man, there's a bunch of stuff. Carbon fiber, uh, peanut butter pie. We've got the, you know, rosin Amazing. rice peanut butter pie as well. Um, that's All, the one that people have been getting. Yeah, I can speak to that personally. <clears throat> um, I just tested six different varieties in my garden. And hands down, the peanut butter pie is absolutely my favorite. And to me, it's like it's either a fino of or it's a very close cross of an OG Kush. Uh, oh, cool. it, ta it tastes, I mean, the way the flavor lingers in your mouth like OG did, it, it's there 100%. Oh, and shit. the high is very intense and very soaring. Like, it's very nice. euphoric and strong. And Roz and Ryan, man, and it's beautiful. I mean, if you look at his, his representations of it look a lot better than mine, and it's just stunning, absolutely stunning. I definitely thought his looks like it leans way more to stuffed French toast, which would yeah. be like toward more toward French toast, which was a four way OG and yeah. uh, stuffed French toast is cookies and cream French toast. So yeah, his has that, <clears throat> that stuffed French toast look where a lot of the other peanut butter pies, like the ones that we kept kind of have a little bit more Georgia look. They bridge the middle, right? Like toasted pecan, which is like a, you know, three, a light Titan, like you know, yeah. five percent rosin monster. Fucking, she's just crushing square footage, you know. But yeah, um, it, his really looks like it. It leans to the stuffed French toast, which is cool. Um, you know, eventually I want to try to work that line too because it's just such like consistent dank. Like when you Classic. smoke it, if, yes. if you like fire, it's yeah. like just really fire weed, right? It's not like oh. It's, these crazy fancy cookie gelato candy things like that's some classic like pack a punch weed you know that's right that's right and so for me like right now i'm playing with a uh, tiki rain <laughs> the tiki rain hits you not like any weed you normally smoke when i smoke the tiki rain it kind of numbs me out from the neck down right but it's very uh, <clears throat> light. Like you're almost feel like you're not getting stoned almost. You know what I mean? But yet you're Uplifting. still kind of numbing out below. So then I pair it with that peanut butter pie that comes in heavy. Uh -huh. And it just yeah. gives me that overwhelming sense of relaxation. And nice. yesterday, my I mean, I'm talking like it knocked my pain. Within an hour of just seshing with the two, I was able to knock my pain down from an eight to like a two or a three. I got up, I grabbed my granddaughter, and we went and had a wonderful day. And I'm telling you, had I not been able to pair those two and sit down and have that session, my day would have been fucking awful. So cheers, nice. bro. Your work <laughs> makes difference in people's <clears throat> lives, you know what I mean? His his tiki, the tiki rain, too, is I know that what, what that's crossed with, one of them is like what people would consider to be sativa. So yeah. it's like that tropical, more, he calls it like a candy thing. I haven't seen it, but he said it was like crazy big, got purple. He's like, it's candy. I was like, oh, that's cool. Uh, he was supposed to send me the cut. He didn't get around to getting it out yet. <laughs> it's, it happens from time to time, but uh, we'll get it eventually. But yeah, the Tiki Rain, I, he told me he had crossed to make that. That's what was in it. Yeah. And so I think you've got like those more uplifting profiles mixed with like, obviously the, the pack, just like that. I guess indica stone is, I, I kind of hate those terms, but right. that's what people right, will consider yeah. it to be like that more sedative, like, yeah, narcotic effect, like the, uh, you want to say, yeah, you know, knocks you down and picks you up at the same time is what JR is looking yeah. for. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, I just need to be disconnected from here down and feel great. Thanks. <laughs> I said, I just need this. Let the rest right. of this auto 
<laughs> oh, that's great. So, um, when you're growing your moms, how often are you replacing? How is your staging happening when you're doing the cloning sessions? Yeah, so it depends. Um, most of most of the moms probably cycle monthly. You know, if if everything's on track, because a lot of those are staying like small, right? A lot of them are are just around for stock. They're not really like occupying a lot of space, especially with hunting and stuff like that. And I'm like constantly trying to get to where I can kill some shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like I constantly have things where I'm like, God, I wish I could kill ten of these or something. Um, and so as that happens, I always get more. <laughs> so, yeah you know so For real uh you know but because of that and and the demand to that it's like you keep you keep things smaller and that that keeps a higher turnover rate on on stuff like that so short shorter short term on that anything that's like uh staging you know you could go a couple months on on something that has more space nice well, let's talk about uh, the stickers, right? So I, I I got a text the other day from Jr. about Sticker Mob, and I was like, "What is Sticker yeah. Mob?" So for uh, for non cool guys like myself that aren't in the know about <laughs> Sticker Mule or Sticker Mob, sorry, uh, tell me all about it and what what is it? I haven't uh, give me the give me the lowdown. Yeah, so it's pretty much a, a new venture that we've started, uh, which I feel like in a lot of senses can be kind of adjacent, right? Because uh, people collect stickers and do a lot of cool artwork for uh, seeds and stuff like that. And then also, um, you know, being in the industry, we know a ton of people who do rosin, do all these different things. And so those people need labels and, uh, you know, we get like connected by friends, connect or whatever it is. And so we've been looking to take on as many like reoccurring monthly jobs as we can just to kind of get the bread and butter going on that. Um, you know, just with any new venture, it's, it's slow starting as you, uh, learn to figure out how to reach people with it. Um, but yeah, it's stickermob.com and you could go on there right now. You can order any custom sticker or label that you want holographic clear. We can do all that stuff. Um, we laminate all the stickers, everything's, you know, coming out premium, just like if you order from uh, any of the competitors that you may be familiar with. And so, you know, if anybody's looking to get labels for their brand, for their jars, or just custom stickers in general, uh, you know, you can reach out to us, you can catch us in Discord, um, or you can send us an email at info at stickermob.com. And just let us know what you're trying to do. And, uh, you know, we'll be there to help cater to those needs as we you know, keep working further down the path of like the print shop, which I feel like the whole print shop thing that we're starting to do now with that, it kind of fits in line uh, with, you know, the evolution of us starting to do so much more with the clothing and trying to work in that area as well. So it's, it's interesting taking on so many different verticals at the same time. And then, you know, me and uh, Mason are having to learn so many different new skills, embroidery and, uh, you know, it's just like, it's really, uh, it's a lot to keep up with. <laughs> so, you know, hopefully people bear with us as we adjust to, you know, learning some of these new things. But yeah, Sticker Mob has been really cool. We've been doing pretty much all the stickers and stuff for Neptune lately and uh, starting to do some of the stuff for West Coast uh, for Toad Venom and and a bunch of different people. So yeah, hopefully other people will reach out. And uh, I know Backwoods from the Discord great community member uh he's ordering stuff you know for his brand and and he's one of the people who did order from us already so yeah it's it's really cool it's like anything like you know it's it's slow start but uh i think it's pretty exciting and and we're, we're definitely interested in, in really growing that side of things well a lot of us uh uh home entrepreneurs i guess you might call us <laughs> we like to brand our shit too you know we like to make yep. our shit look nice we like to present our shit well you know, and so for us to have an opportunity to hit you up with, you know, maybe uh, designs and stuff we wouldn't hit a normal print company up with, uh, it's a cool opportunity. And the other thing is I made a post and it's like support the culture. You know what I mean? Don't order your stickers from some sticker mafia somewhere and <laughs> who knows where, you know, support the culture, you know, support, 
yeah the people who are here for us um <clears throat> also you had mentioned that you kind of wanted to do that for our uh our listeners today and our viewers today uh they were going to be able to get 25 stickers made um yeah. they were going to go ahead and uh give brad an email and a design and he's going to make some stickers for you so um uh, we're going to have a giveaway at the end of this episode, like we always do. And so we'll be giving away somebody an opportunity to get a little branding in and get a taste of what the sticker mob has to offer. And Absolutely. you also mentioned embroidering. And as I'm flexing right here, uh, talk about the clothing. <laughs> talk about the clothing because yeah. it's exciting. Yeah, I don't have one of those yet. It's weird. <laughs> I know. I <laughs> Yeah, if you, if, here, let me read the questions I have for you uh, for this section. Um, uh, when do I get my new hat? Uh, <laughs> when do I get to have my new hoodie? And uh, when are you going to sign me up for your modeling contract? Soon. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Soon, soon, and sooner. <laughs> <laughs> so good. No, tell us about it, Brad. Break it down. Yeah. Uh, so the clothing thing is is really a lot of fun for me. Um, it's just like an interesting creative output, um, getting to see what people vibe with and, and working on that process. It's another vertical that I'm definitely interested in trying to really build up and, and try to scale to maybe have its own, you know, more predominant existence because we could reach a lot more people with uh, interesting clothing company than we could probably reach with the seed company. Right. And so I think it presents an interesting opportunity to kind of, um, I guess, like I said, just get that reach that we, we wouldn't be able to have, like, I can't run advertisements, uh, in traditional marketing or yeah, raw, totally. but for raw genetics clothing co there isn't any restrictions on what I can do. Right. So it's its own entity. It does everything on its own. And so through that, um, hopefully we can find a way to reach more people. But yeah, I've got a lot of new designs. If if people are interested, if you're in Discord, you should see that we've been dropping a bunch of new designs. I've got these cool 3D models trying to get people a better vibe of, of what yeah. they're going to oh, look where? like. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, you know, we were we were down for a minute. Unfortunately, a few months there, I feel like we lost a bunch of our momentum on people who were like keeping yeah. up with it. And then, uh, but everything's back now. The site's in full swing. Everything, card processing's back on. Everything's fixed now. And uh, yeah, we should have some new designs coming out. So like, so I, like I was saying, we've got embroidery as well. So that's been an interesting yeah. challenge, uh, trying to learn to do digitizing. Like yeah, here's yeah. one of the hats yeah. I did here. This is uh, the dead apes here. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to order some of, some of the embroidery stuff. Cause it's taking me so long <laughs> to, to uh, do what, cause like, I obviously want it to be super high quality. So it's taking me a long yeah. time to really reach that skill level. So in the short term, I'm going to be, you know, paying some pro digitizers to knock out some of these designs. And I'm looking to do like fully embroidered hoodies, right? We're embroider on the front, big embroidery mm -hmm. on the back. So you can expect to see some of that stuff hopefully getting displayed soon. And as soon as the displays are up um, and we've got it working, then, you know, they'll be available. And since we're doing it in-house, I'm pretty sure that we'll be able to beat what other people would charge for that oh, yeah. same that's you know because like to pay an embroiderer to uh run the machines and that many stitches like it's a lot of thread uh that shit does add up embroiderers charge a lot of money to do that stuff so you know i'm really excited to really uh level up some of the stuff that we're gonna have like that and just a side note um custom embroidery for people is going to be available on sticker mob as well i feel like i should have mentioned that before um, but it's just so many new verticals that we're we're getting accustomed to right now but yeah that was kind of one of the driving factors as much as i like doing embroidery for myself i don't think that that really was enough for me to justify getting the machine so it's really part of our venture with Sticker Mob and everything we're doing there. Um, I'm great at running the machine. I'll definitely be getting the designs done by people in the short term. But um, yeah, so that's 
should be coming pretty soon to stickermob.com where you can order custom hats, custom hoodies, uh, polos, embroidered, pretty much whatever products we can see that uh, people would be interested in having done for their own brands, for for anything, just like you would order from any print shop. You know, We're looking to offer those um, services to people as well. That's awesome. I'm I'm definitely going to keep you in mind because uh, for the sort of work I do for my day job, I often get custom stickers and T-shirts and other things made. And so I encourage anyone who's watching this as well to keep Brad in mind for any sorts of gigs like that that you uh, have or come up with. Uh, make sure to hit up Sticker Mob. That's a really cool, like just JR was saying, support the community. Rather than supporting uh, some other sticker sites out there uh, that are run by people that aren't particularly awesome you can support yeah. one uh, <laughs> that are uh, that is run by a good guy right here you know well yeah, said. man I, well honestly said. if the community does support us that would be amazing obviously you know we've already got so much support from them with raw and everything it's been amazing there so you know hopefully uh people will give us a shot and you know we'll do our best and offer great service and good turnaround time and uh the, the quality of the stickers, you know, we've got all the correct materials and laminators and all that kind of stuff. And it's been a it's been a lot of fun, uh, but very challenging. <laughs> yeah, know, I want to I just want to give a pro tip for anyone out there in Oregon. If you order a sticker and you attach it to a bag of weed, you can gift that bag of weed and then just have them pay you for the sticker. And it's legal. <laughs> In the state of Oregon, you are allowed to gift up to an ounce of weed and a half ounce of concentrates. So get out there and order your stickers and make Oregon better. Just a disclaimer, we are not stickers. lawyers. We are not lawyers yeah. here, and we are not giving you legal advice. This is not legal or financial yeah. advice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You do that at your own we risk. Are not yeah, we're not yeah. legal or financial uh, authorities here. <laughs> <laughs> um, <It's all> right. <laughs> well, let's uh, we're gonna drop an kinda, alpha. Yeah, we're gonna drop. Uh, we're gonna <laughs> kind of end the show here, and but we're gonna have we have a last kind of uh, questions that we wanted to throw at you. Our final shout outs and final uh, few questions that we always like to get through um, at the end of our shows. So. Um, JR, you always, this is your favorite question that you always like to end uh, the shows uh -huh. with. So give it to us. So, what, uh, so, in your cannabis journey, Brad, what was the scared the shit out of you moment that you remembered the most? Oh, man. It is um, Halloween. It is Halloween, right? Scared the spooky. shit out of you. <laughs> Well, I would say so, probably scary moment. There's plenty of things that I couldn't say. So, <laughs> so I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think of what, something that I can say. Um, <laughs> man, that's <laughs> the tough one. <laughs> something that scared me. Yeah, I don't know. I, you, you got me beat. I, I don't think I have anything that's safe for the workplace. So, <laughs> all right, uh, that's a fair enough answer. That's, we'll, we'll leave go it to their with, uh, Right. Well, yeah, it's it's interesting. Just imagine something interesting. It's like that. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. So um, are there any sort of events or things that are coming up on the horizon that you want to make sure that people are aware of or maybe they could catch you at if you are going to anything in person or anything like that? No, no events. I feel like, uh, you know, market's so down bad right now that events are pretty much just not really viable. They were yeah. already not great last year, and I would imagine this year is probably even worse. So I don't really know too many people hitting events. We'd love to. I wish we could. Um, but yeah, so there's not really anything planned right now. We're just doing our um, Sunday, like, education classes in Discord, which oh, are cool. free. Just join Discord. Um, you know, our community leader and um, one of the other breeders from our secret selection testing discord, they basically like set it up, get it going and kind of do a little bit of hosting on um, on some education classes that we have that are like actual college classes. Uh, you can't just find the, the content on the Internet for free. Um, and so we have like, you know, two two different classes there and there's just a ton of videos, a ton of 
uh, really in-depth knowledge and some more topical stuff that's easier to digest in some of the videos. So yeah, if you guys are interested in in learning for free and and just getting with some cool people in the community, that's pretty much every Sunday. I want to say it like four twenty. I feel like that also might be wrong. Um, maybe that's because <laughs> it would be like it would be like one twenty my time because California. So I feel like it's it's somewhere in that zone. If you touch base with us in Discord, we can definitely get a more accurate timetable to you there. But it it is every Sunday they they host those. Um, for the community so yeah that's that's one cool thing that we're, we've been doing to try to just you know keep it interesting and, and it's education is always good right yeah yeah especially free education free education yeah i, I did actually pay for it <laughs> yeah. so i paid i paid for it and so you know it just seems only fair that um you know we well, obviously we don't like release the media or whatever because that would be irresponsible but we do share it with people that way everybody can try to level up their grows a little bit and uh, just bring the community together so very cool thanks brad well um for folks that dug this interview and they want to support you and they want to like follow you on all the things and buy all the stickers, give us all the shout outs, all the URLs, all the things. All of them. Man, all I know it's starting everything. It's starting to actually be a lot now. So uh, <laughs> we've got stickermob.com, rawclothingcode.com, rawgenetics.io, and secretselections.io. If you need clones, hit us at Secret Selections. All of the good genetics that we're working on are at rawgenetics.io. Uh, Sticker Mob is our newest venture where you can get custom you know, vinyl stickers or labels or anything you need for your branding or just for fun to hand out at events. Um, and then Raw Clothing Co. is kind of where I'm, I'm having fun, and you can expect to see a bunch of embroidery and a lot of new designs, which I've been debuting some of them in Discord right now. Um, but yeah, you can see those coming on rawclothingco.com. So hopefully you guys will keep up with us on some of these ventures, anything that might fit for you. And, uh, you know, we're always here to have your back. Awesome. Well, Brad, thank you so much for joining us. If you've been watching the show, make sure to uh, follow uh, Brad and Raw Genetics on all the things. Visit those sites. Uh, support his businesses. It's really awesome um, what Brad does for the community. He's coming up with all these cool ventures and then also giving back to the community. He's providing so much creativity and so much, you know, high level of service. You know, that's um, it doesn't go unnoticed. And I know a lot of people appreciate it. Um, so thanks to Brad. Thanks to also to our supporters, like we said at the top of the show, Lost Coast Plant Therapy, TikiSeeds.com, Neptune, Neptune Seed Bank, and of course <laughs> our uh, supporters in the chat and the cannabis community who said, great show. So uh, thanks, <laughs> Brad, for the episode. Shout out to the chat. <laughs> and then uh, JR, as always, Growers, growers love. love. Thanks, everybody.